Hand stack start is actually really good. I am in love with hand stack start. Some people may say it's a next JS killer. Why people are so bullish about it is because Tanstack's philosophy feels very natural to the way we've been developing apps, especially client-side apps. If you're a developer who's been frustrated with the constant breaking changes, the paradigm shifts that happen every single release, and not knowing what the hell is a React server component, then let me tell you, there is a new framework that's about to bring sanity back into your development. Because building with Tanstack Start feels like the natural way of building apps. In this video, we're going to take a look at the four main features of Tanstack Start, the router, server functions, isomorphism, and how to fetch data. I'm also going to sprinkle in how it compares with Next.js, so keep watching for that. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shruti Kapoor. I have been a front-end engineer and have been coding React apps for the last 12 years. And ever since I started Tanstack Start, I have been in love with it. So in this video, I'm going to share my love with you to help you understand what Tanstack Start is and hopefully make it easier for you to do web development. So sit back, relax, and hit that subscribe button. Let's get into Tanstack Start. All right, so what is Tanstack Start? Tanstack Start is a meta framework built on top of libraries like React, Solid. And what's amazing about Tanstack Start is that it is powered by the same team that built amazing libraries like Tanstack Router, one of the most popular routers today, and Tanstack Query, which is the standard of data fetching today. Today, Tanstack Start is an RC stage. But don't let that scare you because Tanstack Start has been downloaded over 2 million times and is backed by some of the biggest companies in the world and has a growing list of supporters. So it is a solid backing and is a project that the community is loving today. Let's talk about why Tanstack Start is gaining popularity today. Tanstack Start is 90% Tanstack Router and 10% Wheat, which is the bundler. Let's take a look at how routing works within Tanstack Start. Let's set up a Tanstack Start project to see it in action. Setting up Tanstack Start project is easy if you're impatient like me. So let's copy this and get started. Now, like I said, the heart of Tanstack Start is router. So let's take a look at how routes work in Tanstack Start. If you use Tanstack Router, this is the same thing. The heart of the project is the routes folder. The way router is set up is through the router.tsx file. This is where we initialize router. This is given to you out of the box. You don't need to do anything. Now let's add a new route called devjokes.tsx. As soon as I add this route, I've already got a new file route created. This is how routes work in Tanstack Start. You can create new routes by simply adding a new file within the routes folder and a new route is automatically created for you. Now let's actually add some dev jokes in here. If I navigate to localhost slash dev jokes, which is the new route I created, I am automatically landed on my dev joke page. So creating a route is super simple. You just need to add a new file and your route is good to go. What if we want to add a dynamic route where if I have a parameter in the URL, it should pick it up automatically. By the way, all of this code is available to you for free in the link in the description. Check out the GitHub repo. Now that we've added a static route, let's see how we can add a dynamic route which actually picks up the parameter from the URL itself. Before that, let's use AI to make our app look pretty. I think I like this. Keep this. So why couldn't the keyboard sleep? Because it had two shifts. <laughs> Now let's add a dynamic route so that I can pick up the name of the person who is using this app. Let's create a folder here called personalized. I'm going to create a dynamic route with a dollar sign called user.tsx. And now you'll notice here that automatically I've got a user variable coming in through here. The way this works is that if I am on personalized and then I type in my name like Shruti, it should show that specific route. Now, how do I actually show the name of the user? This is where Tanstack Router comes in. So now I can pick up this user property from the params, which comes from the route itself. And now all I got to do is bring this variable in. And that's how simple it was. So that's how to create a dynamic route in Tanstack Start which uses Tanstack Router underneath. Now, what makes Tanstack Router super powerful is its end-to-end -end type safety. What does that mean? Now, let's say that I'm working on a new file and by mistake, I wrote users here when the name of the file was user. As soon as I type this, you'll see that I get an error that says argument of type user is not assignable to this because I've made a mistake. And as soon as I save this, this auto corrects to user. This is extremely important because you get type safety out of the box. So you can be sure that if you made a file called user.tsx, whatever the name of the file may be, you will get an exact match of the route in your component itself, which is going to fix so many bugs where you mistakenly typed users instead of user or had an S instead of a Z. Type safety out of the box works like magic. Now, an important thing to remember about Tanstack Start and Tanstack Router is that it 
it is isomorphic by default. This is the biggest pain point in TanStack Start, and this is one that trips up a lot of developers. So let's take a look at what isomorphic means. All code in TanStack Start is isomorphic, which means it runs both on server and client unless explicitly constrained. So if you have a function written in TanStack Start, it'll run both on server and client. And this applies to the loader functions within route loaders as well. Why this trips up people? Because if you're fetching an API here, this will run on the server so you can access environment variables, but it will run on the client as well. So you're exposing environment secrets in the client bundle. This is a problem. Let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so to show you what isomorphic means, I've got a loader function in here where I'm just logging console log. And this will actually help you understand when the loader runs on the server versus on the client. So if I give this page a reload, I'm on the dev jokes for file, I give this page a reload. I see here that it says I'm running the loader for dev jokes. So this is logging on the server. Now I'll do client side navigation using the link component to navigate to Shruti's personal page i'm on shruti's personal page and if i go back to dev jokes notice in here i'm seeing the loader for dev jokes running on client side and this doesn't run on server side anymore so on the first navigation which is when we load the page the loader is running on server side and on subsequent navigations which is if i click through using the link element which is client side navigation, I'm seeing the loader run on the client side. And that is an important part of isomorphism that you need to remember. Now, this is the default behavior. You can change this to server only or client only functionality. Let's take a look at how to do that with TanStack Start. While filming my microphone's battery actually ran out, so I didn't realize the next part was muted. So enjoy a small section of me doing a voiceover. One of the coolest parts of TanStack Start is actually server functions, which help us put data on the server. For example, let's say we have this super secret key, which we definitely don't want to put on the client side. If we put it in the loader, this would actually get exposed to the client bundle as well. And we don't want that. So if we look at our console, not only do we get it on the server, but we also get it on the client side. And this is why server functions are super important. So let's take a look at how that works in TanStack Start. Remember, TanStack Start is client first. So in order to create a server function, we need to call create server function from TanStack React Start. And creating a server function is super easy. We create a create server function. We can optionally provide a method of get, but if we don't provide anything by default, it is a get. If we were doing mutation, we could provide a post in here. And then we just have to define our handler, which is where I'm gonna return my key. And now we've created our first server function. Now that we've created this server function, calling the server function is super easy. All we gotta do is call this function as usual. Because this is a server function, this only runs on the server, even though the loader is isomorphic. Let's test that. So we've got get secret key is being called here on the server. Now, when I navigate this app like usual on the client side, I do not see the secret key logged on the client side, which is exactly what I needed. Another thing that's cool about create server function is that even though this may look like magic, in reality, it's just a fetch call. So if you look at your network request, there's this weird API thing, which is actually just a hash of your server function. And why this looks like this is because it is in RPC call. So it is a simple get request that looks like a simple API URL. In the background, it is just a simple fetch call. Now, of course, if you're on a client environment, you don't want to have a server function. So for that, there are client-only execution functions like create client only function. And also remember, TanStack Start is a client first framework, which means that if you don't create a server function, your components are going to be client first rendered on the client. But if you want your loader to also be client only, there is a way to do that. So for example, if you want to access DOM or you want to access local storage, which you cannot do on the server, you can use a function called create client only function in which you can access items that are only client side only like local storage. And here's another cool thing. If you want a function that returns different values for when it is called on the server versus when it is called on the client, you can call create isomorphic function. And on the server, you can return different data. And on the client, you can return different data. Super cool. What I specifically like about this is it's much more cleaner to understand when you're on the client and when you're on the server. And by default, everything is isomorphic. So you can also choose to send different data when you're on client and versus when you're on server. I love this feature. 
Now let's talk about how to fetch data from an API in Tanstack Star. If you are an app developer, that is most likely the kind of stuff you're going to be doing. To help you with that, I actually wrote a full guide on the documentation, which is calling an external API using Tanstack Star, in which I show you how to call a movie API from TMDB to show movies on the page. Go check that out if you're interested in how to call an external API. But I'm going to quickly show you three examples of how to do this in your Tanstack Start app. The first is, as the guide says, you can call your actual API within the server function, and this renders the data on the server. You can do a fetch call and return the data. Then within your loader, you just call the server function like a normal function. This way, on the first load, the API is actually called on the server. And on the subsequent loads, this is called on the client side, just like how a server function works. Another way to do that is by creating a server route and you can use a specific endpoints in here for all of your server API routes like slash API and dev joke. And this is where you can return the actual data. You don't have to create an external API or create a new API. You can return data from your server functions itself using a server route. This function returns a get response here, but you can also do mutations here and do a post request. And finally, here's a client side way of fetching data. We've been using use effect and putting fetch calls in there for a long time. Now, this is where you would put React Query. React Query doesn't come as part of Tanstack Start. However, if you're doing client side calls or if you need caching, React Query is a great place to do that. Note that this entire data fetching is happening on the client side. And you'll notice here that we're actually calling the fetch API on the client side as well. I think Tanstack Start's biggest strength is the server actions and the type safety that is all across Tanstack Start. Tanstack Start server actions allow you to fetch data, validate that data, and respond with the mutation in the same function, which is different from Next.js server actions. I think this is the biggest strength of Tanstack Start. The ability to call an API, fetch that data, mutate that data, and render the data in the same component, the co-location, I think is what makes Tanstack Start super popular. If I had to do this in Next.js, I would have to write a lot more code because I would need to create a server action for doing the mutation, and then I would create a server component for actually fetching the data. Tanstack Start allows for co-location, which feels a lot more natural to the way that we've been writing our app so far. I'm going to dive deep into the differences between Next.js app and Tanstack app by rebuilding the Netflix clone that I did in the React Crash Course by building it in Tanstack Start and then building the same app in Next.js. So stay tuned for that. I think that's going to be a fun video. But here is my favorite part about Tanstack Start. It is the selective server-side rendering, which makes me a fan of Tanstack Start. What does selective SSR mean? By default, we know that Tanstack Start does server-side rendering. How does server-side rendering work in Tanstack Start? So, if you don't change anything, the default behavior is that before load and loader will run on the server. Before load will send the resulting context and loader will run on the server and send the data to the client. So before load and load both are run on the server, send the data to the client. Then the component will render on the server and it sends the HTML to the client. This is how default mode works. So for example, before load executes on the server during the initial request, and then it executes on the client for subsequent navigation. This is what we saw as well. And the loader, same thing, executes on the server for the initial request and executes on the client for subsequent navigation, which is when using link. And then finally, the component is rendered on the server and HTML is delivered to the client. You can easily turn server-side rendering off by just setting SSH SSR to false in the component itself, in the file route that you want to turn off. This flexibility to easily turn off server-side rendering page by page is what makes me a fan. So if you turn this off, this basically behaves like a client-side rendered app. So for example, before load executes on the client during hydration, loader also does it on the hydration, and the component is rendered on the client. This is how non-server-side rendered apps work. However, there's a really cool feature, which is the hybrid option, in which only the data will be rendered on the server. I love this option. So in this option, before load runs on the server, context is sent to the client. Loader runs on the server, and loader data is sent to the client, but the server 
side, the rendering of the component is disabled on the server and the component renders on the client. So this way you get both the heavy lifting on the server. You can call like, for example, your database on the server, send that data to the client, and then your component can be completely on the client side if you don't want to render it on the server. This hybrid approach is what made me a fan of Tanstack Start. Now, there is one thing in which Next.js is still winning, and that is React Server Components. Tanstack Start does not support React Server Components as of now. However, it is being worked on, and I'm sure in a few months, it will be there. That is one thing that Next.js is definitely leading on and leaning heavily on Server Components first approach. And another great thing about Next.js is that the developer community around it is super strong because it has been around for a while. There are tons of resources and tons of jobs for people who are looking for Next.js developers. However, However, the community for Tanstack Start is rapidly growing and people are super bullish about Tanstack Start, including myself. <laughs> So the main difference between Next.js and Tanstack Start is that Tanstack Start is client first, whereas Next.js is server first. Because Next.js is server first, it's best for SEO sites, marketing sites, content sites, where you need data rendered on the server so it can be crawled super fast. Tanstack Start, on the other hand, is great for interactive apps that need end-to-end -end type safety, for more fine-grained control, and for apps that feel more natural to the way that we've been writing our apps. Now, for a full deep dive on how to build a video player app with Tanstack Start versus Next.js, stay tuned. If you like this video, give this a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel. Thank you for supporting me. I'll see you in the next video.